Lindsay in her early 20s. Let's all hear a big round of applause for her. Now joining Helen here in this exhibit are two more faces. Those of you who have been to the aquarium many times will recognize Spinnaker, the most experienced of our dolphins, is also likely in his early 20s. They're accompanied by Hannah, the youngest of the three, who's thought to be in her later teens. Now, Helen, Hannah, and Spinnaker are clearly dolphins, something you can deduce from the way that they are leaping so high out of the water and by their torpedo-shaped bodies. However, just what species of dolphin are we looking at? That's a question we can only answer by looking at their color patterns. Different species of dolphins often have different markings on their bodies, and Helen, Hannah, and Spinnaker are very distinctive looking. We refer to them as Pacific white-sided dolphins, and as they leap out of the water, take a look for the pale stripes down their sides that give them this special name. Pacific white-sided dolphins are found as far north as Alaska, as far south as California, and all the way across into the waters of Japan. And they do have a reputation worldwide as some of the world's most energetic, social, and acrobatic animals. We are incredibly lucky to be working with these animals here at the Aquarium. I want to hear another big round of applause for these incredible acrobatic feats. <laughs> However, studying Pacific white-sided dolphins here at the Vancouver Aquarium doesn't just mean that we are looking at these big splashy behaviors. To scientists, seeing energetic behaviors like this in the wild is also fascinating, because Pacific white-sided dolphins haven't spent much time here on the coast of British Columbia until recently. We've been seeing more and more members of this normally ocean-going species coming closer and closer to coastlines over the past 50 years, giving us a great opportunity to get out our cameras and take some photographs. As an awful show off of here in the circus, you might want to try to grab a photo for your research catalog. And when you get home and look at those pictures, see if you can identify who is who. I can tell the dolphins apart by looking at the shapes of their bodies, the different color patterns that are there as well. But like an easy beginner's guide that you can use with dolphins, or a way to get to know dolphins that you haven't seen before, is to look at their dorsal fins. On their backs, this fin is very distinctive, kind of like people's fingerprints, no two are alike. Spinnaker's dorsal fin has the most white on it, he's closer to me, whereas Helen's dorsal fin is much more deeply curved than Hannah's, which is triangular shaped. Use this as a guide to keep in mind which dolphin is which all through the day. You can review this information downstairs in our underwater viewing gallery, or by asking a staff member later. However, now that we know who these dolphins are, I think you need to take a second to think about why more Pacific white-sided dolphins are coming into the waters of British Columbia. One thing that's obvious is that they must have some food available. These animals can be excellent predators. Schooling animals like fish and squid are definitely on the menu, and inside their mouths, Spinnaker, Helen, and Hannah all have between 80 and 120 sharp teeth. However, you might have noticed that as Sherry was feeding the dolphins a moment ago, they were not really chewing their food much, but seemed to be swallowing that food whole. However, one of the fish that we like to eat a lot would probably be a little bit big. Dolphins, could you swallow a whole salmon? I think I'm seeing some head shaking over at Sherry's end of the dock, and it looks like we agree over here on Helen's side. In truth, the dolphins are not really answering my questions, of course. They can, however, use that head shaking movement to use those powerful teeth, tearing big fish like large salmon into more manageable, bite sized pieces. Pacific white sided dolphins are not just prey predators, however, they can sometimes serve the role of prey in our food chain. Fortunately for them, to get away from larger predators, their color pattern that we think is so beautiful is actually useful to hide them. That's a color pattern called countershading, which means dark backs and pale bellies. Notice how Helen's dark back vanishes when she returns to the water. As for the white underside of a dolphin, that might not seem quite so obvious as to why it would be useful. However, imagine a creature swimming underneath and seeing a bright belly like this one. The whiteness would probably blend in with the sky on a bright day like today. If countershading isn't enough to protect Pacific white-sided dolphins, however, they do have some more active techniques for avoiding becoming a prey. These animals uh, have a couple of major predators, including killer whales, one of the largest species of dolphins found worldwide, which could swallow a Pacific white-sided dolphin whole. The acrobatics that we've seen today are not just useful for showy displays. Moving through air is faster than moving through water, and we think this might give Pacific white-sided dolphins the edge in escaping their faster cousins. These animals can also sometimes encounter large 